It's 10 p.m. Thanks for watching NBC 10, home of the live storm tracker Doppler radar and local news that impacts you. And now, your Billy Wood Honda forecast first. Well, good evening, everyone. Taking a look at the almanac for today, daytime highs reached into the mid to upper 60s. Overnight lows were in the mid 40s, but tonight will be a completely different story. Now, taking a look at our records for just a moment, 2017 had 81 degrees. Similar story as to yesterday, but negative one in 1962. I'm not expecting us to get anywhere near that over the next few days. Just know it's going to be pretty close in some cases in the teens. It's going to feel like the single digits, especially on a Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning. Day planner shows that Overnight lows are going to fall into the upper 20s and lower 30s. Tomorrow, daytime highs thaw out to the mid 50s later in the afternoon. That's your forecast for us. NBC 10 News at 10 starts now. Live from the NBC 10 Broadcast Center, this is your Arklamis News Source. Voted Best Newscast and Best Weather by the Louisiana Association of Broadcasters. This is NBC 10 News, live at 10. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Kyla Scott. Our top story tonight, Governor Landry says the state is prepared to help local leaders if they're needed when the weather hits, but there are questions if the state's power grid is strong enough to handle it. Sydney Simone explains. Ahead of potential freezing temperatures next week, fire departments and energy crews are sharing emergency preparedness tips to keep people safe. Back in 2018, we had nine people that within that first week of January lost their lives due to house fires. Firefighters say it's important to check for working smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. Running a generator or a car in an enclosed area is dangerous. And if it's your first time turning on the heat this season, safety officers say don't be alarmed. When you initially kick it on for the first time, you haven't used it, there may be some dust that's on the heating element that you'll smell burning off. But if that smell gets stronger or if you start noticing smoke in your home, now it's time to call, you know, 911. They add dozens of house fires in the winter start with space heaters. Safety officials recommend keeping them at least three feet away from objects and turning them off when you're sleeping or not in the room. With winter events, it can be a little different than, say, a hurricane. The roads may be hazardous, it could be iced over depending on the conditions, so it may make transportation a little difficult after the fact. To prevent downed power lines, Entergy says they trim tree branches throughout the year. The ice will uh, accumulate on power lines, on tree limbs, and it'll cause power lines and limbs to sag, which one can cause damage to our equipment. David Freeze with Entergy says to avoid frozen pipes, keep the thermostat at 68. For each degree above that, it adds about 3% to your bill. It can cause energy consumption to, um, to go up, and that can have an effect, of course, on your utility bill. More importantly, have a plan in case the power goes out or you have to evacuate. That was Sydney Simone reporting. New tonight, Governor Jeff Landry issued a state of emergency today ahead of next week's winter weather. The National Weather Service expects temperatures to plummet across the state with wind chills in the teens to near freezing for central and north Louisiana. To stay prepared, you can visit getagameplan.org for a full checklist of items you may need, and you can check out 511.la.org for the latest on road conditions. And more out of your weather station, Monroe officials have released some tips on how to prepare your home. Disconnect drain and garden hoses from outside faucets. Cover them with insulation or fabric. Insulate any exposed piping. Seal cracks to keep out cold air. And let your faucets drip during freezing temperatures. If you have a pipe burst, use your shutoff valve. If you do not have one or cannot locate it, call the city water distribution office at the number on your screen for an emergency shutoff. The winter weather doesn't stop the work day for many people in Louisiana. Here are some tips on how you can stay safe during your travels. Roads during inclement weather and during the winter can be different and difficult to drive on. The Caddo Parish Sheriff's Office shares advice for those on the roadways. Try to stay to the inside lane because roadways crest towards the middle. And if you're in the outside lane, that is more problematic because you could slide off ice can start to accumulate on roads. The ice, which, become, which uh, makes it very slippery, and you can slide right through. They say it's important to drive carefully while the temperature is dropping. The more people that we have on the roadways, 
equals more crashes and more fatalities. So when you're coming up the intersections, be wary that the packed ice that used to be at that intersection is now a sheet of glass, a sheet of ice. He says those crossing bridges and underpasses should stay towards the center of the bridge. Especially if it's a two-lane roadway, that way you're giving yourself enough room to be able to react. Because if your vehicle goes into a spin, you want to turn into the direction that you want to go. If your vehicle does start to spin or slide, it's important to not hit your brakes. CPSO also wants to remind others to be mindful of other drivers. Take care of yourself, but also be mindful of other drivers who are not as uh, experienced. There are many ways people can stay safe when driving in stormy and icy weather, such as braking for intersections early, limiting lane changes, and even keeping your windows clear before and while driving. Meantime, Entergy is suspending disconnects for non-payment next week because of the freezing temperatures that are coming. The suspension period will be from Monday through Friday. After that, they will do a day-by-day -day assessment to see if they can resume disconnects or keep them suspended. Well, shifting gears to the courts, the former West Monroe High School teacher arrested for computer-aided solicitation of a minor is now facing more serious charges. NBC 10's Valerie Moravi was in court today and has the latest. Come here. Come here, Hatch was arrested again on January 11th, and her charge was upgraded to indecent behavior with juveniles after posting a $25,000 bond on January 11th. An original protection order was issued during her last court date on January 5th. During a court hearing held on January 12th, Judge Will Colwell stated that he wanted the protection order to remain in place, saying, quote, these are very serious allegations, end quote. As of now, Hatch has been under house arrest since January 11th. Judge Colwell ordered Hatch not to be in contact with the victim. The additional charge of indecent behavior with juveniles comes after Hatch was accused of sending nude pictures to a student and touching the student inappropriately. According to court documents, authorities were advised that the 15-year-old victim showed his father an Instagram message threat that supported the victim's claims. Officials confirmed that the teacher in the threat was Hatch, who was then identified as a teacher at the West Monroe High School. Hatch has been scheduled to appear in court on February 6. She remains under house arrest. Reporting in Monroe for your Arklamis News Source and Valerie Morali. Coming up on NBC 10 News at 10, we've got a look at what's making headlines in Arkansas. That's next on your Aquamus News Source. And now, your Arkansas update with Cindy Langston. Good evening, I'm Cindy Langston with your South Arkansas News Update. Strong thunderstorms and high winds slammed South Arkansas this morning, bringing heavy damage to several of our communities. J.W. Meisenheimer has the story from Hampton. Residents in Calhoun County were woken up in the early hours of the morning to sounds of hell and freight trains. To some, it felt like they were in a nightmare. And when the storm passed, citizens discovered a devastating scene. I say around 5, 5.15 this morning, um, we were under a severe watch, did a lot of damage to our town. But it was very, very scary and it happened so quick, Man. so quick. It's been, it been a while. You know, we have had some come through, but this was the first one that I, I can recall that really got me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I said, you could hear the wind. You could hear the wind before the rain came. Very, very high. And very it was. High. And then my cousin next door, she said she almost positive it lifted her trailer and put it back down. Oh, right I've now. never seen metal in a tree. The tallest tree, it's metal, like just up there, like somebody just laid it there. All of a sudden, the lights blinked twice, and then uh, it started hailing. The lights went out and then like the, my whole house started shaking and everything. It sounds like a train. It sounds like a train. It scared the heck out of me. Most of the damage occurred on Main Street, severely affecting businesses and homes. The storm also affected the Hampton School District. Uh, we've lost uh, most of the roof on the elementary, uh, which has caused water to get into the building. We're in the process of Trying to do some cleanup, move some things around. As you can see, uh, we lost quite a bit of our library capacity. We're having them change rooms today. Uh, we've canceled classes for kids today. Uh, our goal for our district 
will be to be back in school on Tuesday morning and, and have regular school for our students. Uh, anytime anything happens bad in this community, we all come together and try to get it cleaned up. Um, it's just, it's constant. We, it started at five o'clock this morning when it was over. They, they uh, just, everybody's trying to get everything cleaned up. God bless. Reporting in Hampton for your Arklamis News Source, I'm J.W. Meisenheimer. Thanks so much, JW. As of now, we do not know what type of storm occurred, but we will keep you updated both on air and on myarklamis.com. In El Dorado tonight, the nation celebrates Martin Luther King Jr. holiday on Monday, and here in Union County, there are several events happening over the weekend to honor the life and legacy of Dr. King. It's just to recognize and to remember what Dr. King stood for, and as we try to live up to his motto and keep his dream alive. Just come out and just view and just have a good time. Our theme is living a dream. It starts with me. There will be a banquet on Saturday night at El Dorado High School in the Commons area beginning at 6 with guest speaker Dr. Azeen Nuidi. He's an, a doctor. And then Sunday from 2.30 to about 3.30, there'll be a Martin Luther King parade, which begins at the auditorium down Northwest Avenue, turns on Main. And then following the parade on Sunday evening at 6 o'clock, there is actually a Martin Luther King musical. It will be performed at St. John Missionary Baptist Church. And on Monday, there will be a community-wide cleanup, weather pending, of course at Maddox Park from 9 until 12. All ages are welcome to come and be a part of all of those events. And in consumer news tonight, gas prices in the natural state are slowly going down. According to AAA, the average American is paying $3.07 for a gallon of gas today in Arkansas. The average in Arkansas is $2.62 as of today. This probably comes as no surprise, but South Arkansas still has the highest gas prices in the state. You can head over to Drew County for the cheapest gas in our area. It's about $2.59 a gallon. Bradley County residents are facing the highest prices at an average of $2.83 a gallon. And here in Union County, the cost of a gallon of gas will run you about $2.69 unless you go to Murphy USA, and I believe it's $2.59 over there. And that is it for your South Arkansas News Update on this Friday. Lauren Ferguson of West Monroe, you are tonight's winner of our Jim Taylor dealership's $100 gas card. That's only if you call before our newscast ends, 318-807-0900. If you want to win some gasoline, register at one of the Jim Taylor dealerships or online at myarchemist.com. Watch for your name every weeknight during NBC 10 News at 10. Humble words of advice for someone who doesn't have a warm regard for cold weather. Fill your gas tanks tomorrow because you're not going to want to stand outside to fill them starting on Sunday, probably ending on Thursday. Full to forecast after the break, you're watching NBC 10 News at 10. Live Storm Tracker Doppler Radar, sponsored by Homeland Bank. And now, exclusive Storm Tracker Doppler weather with meteorologist Alex Noel. Well, good evening, everyone. Taking a look at our radar at this hour, it is 10 7 p.m. Wow, 10 17 p.m. Across the Arklamis at this hour. Nothing here to track, and uh, that's expected to stay this way for the next few hours or so, or at least until Sunday evening. But we'll talk about that in specifics in just a moment. Uh, regarding our temperatures, we are already at 32 in some locations. Russin, you're at 33, so only one degree away from freezing temperatures. And it's likely that majority of the Arklamis will see temperatures at or below freezing. Majority of us below freezing tonight, especially in the upper 20s. Dew point temperatures show a very dry atmosphere outside, so there's not much in terms of of water holding heat and energy near the surface, so radiational cooling is potentially going to occur later tonight, especially with the lack of cloud cover that we have across the region. As far as our wind speeds, we are calming down per se. Some of us are still seeing a little bit of a breeze in Monroe, Greenville, and Monticello, but others are seeing rather quiet conditions, all things considered, compared to what we were at around midnight to about 5 a.m. this morning, especially in Monticello, seeing 56 mile per hour. That was a maximum wind gust. Monroe seeing 51, El Dorado 46. Camden 36, so rather breezy behind that frontal system moving out the way, but things are calming down. You can see the front well off eastward behind me, but here in the Arklamis, we're doing rather well, rather quiet. Now, let's talk about it. Everyone wants to know about it. It's the snow word. 
the frozen precipitation. And we're going to talk timing because really the accumulation numbers and amounts that we've been looking at are not quite set in stone. Neither is the type of frozen precipitation, which we'll talk about in just a moment. So notice around 9 p.m. realistically it's going to be 9 to 11 p.m. that our very northwestern counties and parishes are going to start to see some sort of uh, precipitation occur. But majority of the precipitation will occur on Monday throughout the morning and midday, clearing later in the afternoon and evening. Now regarding what type of precipitation you're going to see. Towards the north, it's likely you're going to see snow changing into sleet, so a mix of those two. Towards the south, I-20 corridor, that looks to be light snow in some areas, but mostly sleet, and then towards the further south, you're going to see a little bit of freezing rain sleet mixture. Now as far as our very southern parishes, Grant, LaSalle, Catacoula, and Concordia parishes, that looks to be mostly sleet and mostly freezing rain. So as the uh, Neapolitan mix here shows, it's going to be colder up north and then further south you go that's when you get to more of the ice accumulation so keep that in mind if you have to drive on elevated surfaces taking a look at our winter storm watch we do have a few in effect for our northeastern parishes as the weekend continues as things kind of get ironed out regarding your information it's likely that more parishes and counties will be added to it size forecast overnight lows fall to the upper 20s tomorrow we eventually thaw out to the uh, mid 50s which is still below average for this time of year and over the next seven days if we do get any sort of, of accumulation on Monday it may not thaw out into frost until Thursday because Tuesday and Wednesday we're not likely to go above freezing. I don't like the sound of that but Me. it is what it is. I know I'll, I'll cry tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Well, coming up next, the sport team gives us a full look at a night of basketball after the break. And now, your Wachita Valley Federal Credit Union Sports Desk. Welcome back into sports, everyone, and welcome back into the Hoop House. Another full night of basketball, and I hope we don't have anyone hanging around on rims around here. It might cause a controversy around town with some schools, but how are we today, Jesse? <laughs> hey, we're definitely doing good. You might just get a tech for doing that, but we got district plays starting for our local teams, and you want to get off on the right foot fast because these games really matter. Jeremy, you had a big one over at Sterleton. Yeah, we did. Let's head on over there to the Panthers, then starting out with Carroll and Sterleton going at it. Look, Levy I always had a big game, as we see right here, putting the defense on Limbo. It's on his way to the basket later in for the dog. Off the rebound is that bad man again. Oh, it's bullying down low. Heard Wilson get him to the line. Now we're on the run. Down the court, gets it to Jaden Williams. He said, come here, cool, I can take these two and call me back in the morning. Time winding down in the first. He lets it go, and it, there goes the buzzer, and there goes the bucket. Christian Johnson had himself a game as well, gets the block, and you don't want to get in his way on the way to the basket. He finesse, finger rolls it in for the deuce. Second half now, he gets in the lane again and makes the tough finish at the rim. Traylon Neal now off the dribble, a step back, says, hey, I got something to take this air with you, because yeah, I hear the buses revving enough, because the dogs trample the Panthers in a blowout win. Now, let's head across town and go to West Monroe and check in on the Lady Rebels, taking on the Washington Lions. McKenna Cooley had a big first half of 12 points and had a big bucket to start us off as she gets to the rim and finishes strong. Bradley Brothers now into the paint and the spin move. The fake flips it up over the defense and drops it in for the Rebels. Brothers again in the lane, but the defense caught her in her track this time with the steal and Jay Spike already had a track. She was going with a fast break layup with no one around. Lions on the inbound now and gives it right back to who? Cooley again. She launches one from deep and it was all gold at the end of the rainbow for three. Spike this time wanted to dance a little bit. Pull up Jay and said, come here, come see about me. Lions run away with it. 58 to 39. Right, congratulations, late around 24 and 0 Bashup looking to keep that win streak going, but Union Formas looking to give them an upset early in the first quarter. Rakia Fields knocking it down from the field. Anastasia Armstrong getting the ball inside the paint, and she's just automatic from inside with an easy deuce. Jamil Peoples with the steal goes coast to coast, and guess what? Finger roll layup is good. Jackson on the other end for the Lady Formas knocks down the three union up by five Mariah Hurd wide open for three and you can count one two three it's good Jamia Peoples would catch on fire in the third knocking down the tray ball here Peoples again hand down man down another one for you now she was not done just yet mama it's that girl again Jamia Peoples knocks down another one 
She was another one and another one. Nothing Burnett. Bastard rolls on into an impressive win, 25-0 uh, now, beating Union 62-25. All right. Now, stand at Bastrop as the boys went in for a little district matchup on their own second quarter. From us up by 10. They're going to add two more with the layup here. Now, hand down, man down again is Hawkins knocking down the wide open jumper for the Rams. Bastrop again this time off the steal and gets the lay in to fall in. It's the quarterback, the state champion, the MVP football, Jordan Hill. He can do it all. Shoots it, splash it in three. Bastrop. Again on the move, gets inside in the basket. He gets to drop the foul and count it. Union, they run away with this one, 66 to 49 over Bastro. Let's get you to some final scores that we couldn't get to, games that we couldn't get to today. Here are Lady Crusaders. They beat uh, OCS 34 to 29. They ended up actually 24 and 0 now. Uh, let's get to the next uh, final scores for tonight. We had more final scores. Uh, St. Frederick uh, and Beekman Charter, they played uh, le yesterday, last night. Uh, St. Frederick saw them sales win at 61 to 43. We're going to keep those final scores rolling for you. Uh, we had a, a lot of games on this evening in Germany. A, a lot. I mean, uh, Simsboro, I mean, they beat West Washington uh, earlier today. It was 88 to 72. Nice. <laughs> nice. Simsboro definitely looking good. The Ritual Lady Rams go on to Shreveport. They beat Northwest the Lady Knights 36 31. Lady Rams, I think they make some noise now. Now the Ritual Rams and the boys, they go on into short enough Webster 68 to 23. I guess a little get back football season. Look like they went hanging on Rams tonight. Wasman Lady Wildcats, they went 66 to 9 over Lady Bearcats. The score, the clock was running in the first quarter. That one got over out of hand really, really fast. And the Wasman Wildcats for the boys, they went 61 to 58 off a buzzer beater tray with no time left on the clock. Knocks in the tray ball. All right, and Neville Lady Tigers, they win 43-23 to 23 over Peabody. A good win for the uh, Lady Neville Tigers. Now the boys, are never, uh, boys of Neville Tigers, they fall short today, 59-55. to 55. Tough, tough loss uh, for them. Now, well, that will actually be a wrap for us. Yeah, it's a wrap for us. It's been a fun week, but it's a wrap. Now, finally, look at your forecast after the break. You're watching NBC 10 News. January 12th. Have a great night.